Hey guys and welcome to the video. This video I'll be showing you an amazing stuff that is essentially RabbitMQ with AWS Lambda integration. How can you fire up Lambdas when, an, when a message lands on a RabbitMQ? In this video, we'll be leveraging the use of AWS MQ, uh, that is nothing but a RabbitMQ managed service by AWS. We'll be adding Lambda integrations and I'll show you everything in this video. So let's get started uh, with this video. Before we do that, well, you know, I have entire playlist on RabbitMQ, which I did in the year 2019. So please come here and watch more about the basic, what a producer is, consumer, exchange, routing key, binding key, yari, 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 yara. All right, so the video is there. Um, so uh, try to come here and watch. So let's head over to AWS Amazon MQ, click on RabbitMQ, very easy, single node broker, put your name here, put your username, password, that's master and master one at the three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I did that, uh, you know, put that, those information um, here, I selected micro because I'm just learning, I'm, you know, experimenting with stuff. So selected micro, click on next, your cluster has been created. Uh, once your cluster is created, head over to the bottom section where you will see connections and you will find a URL, right? So you can copy the URL and now um, you can come here to uh, your incognito um, and you know, you'll see a screen like this. After that, put in your username, put in your password, now right here. So here, as you can see, now this is the dashboard. Uh, in my uh, playlist, I have I, I usually I, I have everything in detail about RabbitMQ. What essentially a producer is, what is an exchange, binding key, yada yada yada. So yeah, so here um, uh, I already have a queue. So I'll try to I'll try to make a queue here for you. So let's do uh, AWS uh, AWS Q3. All right, so I'm gonna make a queue here. You can, you know, do all the crazy things. For example, um, how, how much time it should expire, overflow behavior, DLQ, TTL, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so all that you can do here. So I already have now three queues, right? So once your queue is created, um, uh, now you can start publishing messages. Um, but if you are using Pika, that uh, in my case, I was using Pika. And if you come to my playlist, you know, there are tutorials, there are code labs here, right? So there is a code for sender and receivers. If you directly, if you don't want to add Lambda integration, and if you simply want to send messages to the RabbitMQ, I have a nice design pattern called Singleton Design Pattern. I wrote some classes in the year 2019. And here you can put in your host, your, your routing key and exchange, and voila, you can, you'll be able to publish messages. So at this point, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create an exchange. So I'm going to say, so I'm writing a name. I'm going to put a direct exchange and I'm going to click on add exchange. So here you can see that's my exchange. Uh, so if you come to the playlist, I'm, again, uh, if I go back, uh, da -da 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 -da. so essentially a producer is the one who produces messages. Queues are the one who receives messages. In order to, in order for the producer to route the message to the appropriate queue, there is something called exchange. You need to create an exchange. So I essentially created an exchange, and and each exchange will have a binding key. So that 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 essentially allows the producer to, producer to route the message to the appropriate queue. So if you are using a Pika module, and again as I said, there is a, there is a playlist here. Come here and watch. Okay. Uh, if you don't know what all these um, terminologies are, okay. So. I'm creating a binding key right now. I'm just gonna call Python, um, address everything, and oh, sorry, I have to I have to put in a Q name, and remember my Q name would be AWS Q3, AWS Q3. My routing key would be Python. That's the so if you come to the diagram, so when producer produces messages, it's gonna go to the exchange, and then the then uh, with the binding key, it would be routed to the appropriate queue. So, so we are creating this component right here uh, in my, um, so as you can see now, you know, uh, that my, my, my routing key is created. So now when I use the routing key Python, it would be delivering my message to that queue. Okay, all right, moving forward. So now I have a queue on RabbitMQ, pretty easy, nothing crazy, right? Going back to the AWS Management Console, now only one thing you gotta do, um, I had to watch a lot of tutorials to figure this out, but now go to secret manager here. Uh, it's very actually easy. So I have an MQ access, so now click on store new secret. Uh, I'm walking you over the steps, click on other, put in username and then I add a password and then put your username and password for RabbitMQ. I did that, okay, I already have one, so I'm not gonna create again. So as you can see, I'll try to show you the value maybe if I can see 
there has to be an option for retrieve secret you know username password nothing crazy all right so now in terms of the integration uh, it was again very simple we can use serverless framework as well but you can click on rabbit mq now here i can select my uh, uh, broker and then i can select my batch size then i can select my batch window uh, here you can put your queue name i uh, remember aws q1 q2 whatever how many ever queues you have so if i go to queue i have three queues right so put your queue name here then you'll select your secret here right and then you click click on next so once you have done that your integration is ready as you can see in this video now what i will be showing you uh, in this case i i'm gonna publish messages to this queue right here i'm gonna say And remember, so once you send this, uh, you can put headers and all. I'm not putting anything right now, just sending messages, right? So, putting in more messages, publish, publish. Okay, so I have some messages now. So you can always monitor your queues as well. So as you can see here, uh, you know, there, 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 there are charts here, which allows you to see. But if you wanna go on a high level, uh, I think uh, my consumers are already consumed uh, the messages, but uh, yeah, I think that's the reason I don't see the numbers here. Uh, but you can co come to the overview tab and you can, if you wanna just get, get an overview, overview of, uh, you know, how many, what, what are the message rate or essentially how many messages have been queued, you can come here and take a look at that. But um, so now, since I did publish, I'm, I'm assuming my Lambda should be invoked at this point. So I can go to the monitor tab, I can click on view logs in CloudWatch and I should see the messages shortly. So I'll try to see that, hopefully. Okay, I have a new cloud, uh, I have an event here. Now, remember the data would be encrypted as you can see. So I'll copy this for you, just to show you. JSON formatter. Uh, I'll come here, I'll dump the JSON, uh, click on process, so I can see this uh, in a beautiful way. So come here, now as you can see, uh, you know, these are my queue, right? I'm passing in events, so this is my data attribute. It's a base64, you need to decode, so I can come here on a website, uh, come here and click, on, uh, okay, yeah. So as you can see, hello YouTuber, hope you are enjoying Samuel Sharp. So you have your messages right in the queue. So you see, like really like right i was able to do everything in a matter of seconds right like things are so easy once you understand the fundamental okay you know okay uh okay i know all the queues now okay sqsq you have rabbit mq you have kafka you can use redis as a as a broker so you now you know the concept you know the fundamentals okay what is a broker okay i know what it's gonna do okay queue it's gonna take the message consumer consume messages right you know the concept then things becomes very very easy to learn right so, um, but hope you have enjoyed this session uh, on RabbitMQ and Lambda integration. This is how you would do uh, on AWS, right? Uh, I'll leave all my uh, previous video tutorial links in the description, the one that I did in 2019 when I was a student back then. So I have all the uh, nice playlists where you can go over uh, step by step on what RabbitMQ is, Pika module, and all that stuff, okay? With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming. And next upcoming videos, we'll explore more and more stuff. For example, maybe Kafka or some, some, some other cues. And, you know, we'll just learn and explore, right? That's what we do. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys next time.